Hello guys and welcome to this new video in this new series. Now, as I said before, we will be making complete projects from start to finish, including bolts, nuts, screw clips, and building materials. So, uh, in this uh, series, we're making an I-beam trolley. We designed the I-beam first, which is an auxiliary part, but a very important one. And now we're doing the roller. So, um, as with uh, the I-beam, before we start, we need to make some decisions. Let's get started and uh, let's go and get those beam dimensions that uh, we got in the previous video. So what we will be doing, and let me just edit it. So let me just edit it with paint here. So what we said we would be doing is creating the first trolley, which is meant to go on these beams, right? So the roller needs to be large enough and uh, you know be biffy enough but it also needs to fit in the smallest uh, of the i-beams and basically that's the um, constraint here uh, in this case we mean the smallest flange width which is this number over here okay so um we have so we have two and a half and three and four and whatnot but we also have a web thickness that will be taking away some of our um, available space so basically the actual space i have to work with to make that roller is the flange width minus the web thickness minus twice the fillet radius yes because i don't want it to be riding on the fillet radius and if we open up our beam part we can actually check that. So this is the beam we designed in the last video. 935, right? 935. So 935. So that is what we have to play with, right? Uh, and then we have another issue, which is this height. Now, this height here is 2.6. If we go into the specs, we see that the depth or height of the I-beam, it's called depth in this table, is uh, 3 inches. And then we have a flange thickness of 0.2, twice that is 0.4, and if we subtract that from 3, it gives us that 2.6 that we measured inside a Libre. Okay, so now we have our working envelope, as it were. Uh, let's go and make that roller. So this is the roller. I'll just, I'm just going to call it that. Uh, I, need, I need my uh, um, axes and my planes and my sketches showing. And again, uh, we're designing this entire assembly in inches. So I will go into my part data units and change this to inches. But because I am Greek, I think in millimeters, so I'll have dual units so that my brain doesn't burn out. And uh, let's go design this thing. Now, when I design uh, revolved profiles from the side, I like to do that. In the YZ plane so I will first do the general profile of this roller okay and then I will dimension it and fully constrain it now you see that I'm not designing the cavity right this roller is not going to be solid it will have a, a cavity for the shaft to go through and for a bedding seat right it'll take a bedding in there because how else are you going to roll, are you going to revolve, right, without significant friction and still be able to carry half a ton? So we will be uh, using bearings there. We will discuss the bearing collection, but for now I'm just doing the outside uh, profile because I want the outside profile and the inner cavity to be two different uh, features. So. I know that I have 2.6 degrees, uh, sorry, 2.6 inches of available space for the height of the roller. So, of course, I'm not going to exhaust that. I'm going to do it 2.5 inches. And because uh, I'm inputting radii here, that's 1.25. So that's done. Then this is the seat, right? This is how far it's going to be touching the I-beam flange. Uh, we measured it, we said we have uh, 0.935, I'm just going to give it 0.9, of course, divided by 2. So now, this this is a small flange, right, that we will be 
having here, and the reason we have this, and most rollers have that, is that so it doesn't fall off the I-beam, right? Uh, and uh, fun fact, when the trolley is being forced towards the right, it is the left side rollers that provide the resistance, and that's why these flanges are on the outside. So um, this needs to be smaller than the largest uh, flange thickness, right? We don't necessarily need to be smaller than the smaller one, but we don't want to be overdoing it, right? So let's see, uh, we have flange thicknesses that range from uh, 0.2 up to 0.35, 0 0.29, 0 0.32. I think that a quarter of an inch is a reasonable value here. Okay, and for the thickness, I'm just going to say 0.15 because that should be enough. I open the hurl bar, select the revolution, select the sketch line, and that's it. And I did something wrong here. I see that the aspect ratio of my wheel here is wrong, and I actually know why it is wrong. Um, I divided this by two for no real reason. That is the correct aspect ratio of my roller, and now I will do the cavity. Now, for the cavity, we need to consider what sort of bedding we will have there for the shaft. We need to take both radial and axial loads. The radial loads is, of course, the weight that this I-beam trolley is going to support. We said that we're shooting for half a ton or about 1,100 pounds. And again, we will have uh, four rollers. So uh, if we can get like something like uh, half the weight for each roller and we have four of them, we get a nice uh, factor of safety as well. So... So these are my considerations when choosing bedding. First of all, I need to take radial and axial loads. The axial loads are when it's trying to fall off the side and these flanges stop it. It's the actual bedding that will take up those loads, transfer them through the um, sheet metal carriers to the other side and hold it from falling off. So it's an integral part of bearing and uh, uh, that's the axial load it will take. So when you need to take radial and axial loads uh, at the same time, there are many ways to do it, but the most compact, cheap, and uh, in my opinion, uh, efficient way to do it is a angular contact double row ball bearing. So where do we get this? Well, what I do is I go to skf.com. Um, I search for one of their products, right? Now, bearings are highly standardized products, right? So any product code that I might find here, right, will be available for any other, um, from any other manufacturer. Uh, however, SKF uh, do provide a lot of technical data. You will see uh, down below what I'm looking for. And uh, they're a high quality manufacturer anyway. So uh, why not go with them? Uh, if we go back to our design here for just a bit, so I have an outer diameter of 2.5 inches, right? So I don't want my uh, bedding to be too large and leave too little material on this roller. Um, I want at least quarter of an inch either side. So um, I have a, an upper limit to the size of my bedding. Another limit is uh, this, right, these 22.86 millimeters or 0.9 inches, the bedding needs to be over the flange of the I-beam. Uh, you don't want to be taking up loads, hanging half the roller outside and all that. So I need this to be less than, less than or equal to 20. So I can uh, input these limits here so my largest bore diameter is 50 my largest width um, I don't want it to be more than 20 and uh, so oh sorry not bore diameter right uh, yeah outside diameter I mean you see that I am getting some uh, recommendations here and these are the uh, bearings that it recommends 
at this point I'm just looking at the basic load bearings and the speed ratings and selecting something that works for me of course in this application we couldn't care less about the speed ratings but we do care about these and we see that we have a dynamic uh, loading of uh, 7.6 kilonewtons and 4 kilonewtons as a static load now 4 kilonewtons is 400 kilograms right and we said that we're aiming for an i-beam trolley that is 500 rated that is rated for 500 kilograms and it's got four of these rollers so uh, at, at this rate we are you know more than safe we we we, we have more than enough bedding capacity if we choose this the smallest uh, bedding which is a 3200 that's the that's the designation and again you can check that uh, if you go to any other bedding uh, manufacturer or even McMaster car and search for a 3200 uh, double row ball bearing you will get the exact same dimensions right board diameter of 10 millimeters outside diameter of 30 and a width of 14. Uh, now what SKF uh, do and I am I like it because I'm accustomed to it right it's uh, easy for me to find I just click technical specifications and I get the abutment dimensions or the seat dimensions so as you see here we've got continuous material and we have a little lip on the outside and that's how I'm going to hold uh, my bedding on one side at least uh, inside the roller and it's telling me that the maximum diameter that this can be is 25.6 millimeters if it is more than that there might not be enough material for the bedding to take out uh, all of its load right to perform like it is rated to perform so um, i'm just going to make it uh, a lip that has a an opening of 25 millimeters and i should be fine and uh, i also get the uh, minimum abutment diameter on the shaft right the shaft is the next part we will be designing so i will also be needing that there uh, which means that it's a good idea to you know not take a screenshot but print this page as a pdf i have everything i need here i've already done it i'm not going to do it again but that's how i work i know how the online catalog of skf works i use it and uh I give the specs to the client and if he doesn't want to order from SKF that's his problem but uh, that's how I design so let's go and make that now uh, we will sketch in the Wazy plane again and now the rough outline of what I need is something like this okay so this is going to be straight up it's going to be horizontal I also need to imprint these two lines which is the start and the end of the cylinder uh, this is going to be on here this is the abutment i was talking about i said i was going to do it give it 25 millimeters um, you know let's give it an inch 25.4 it's still within spec and we're designing in inches and it's easier so the radius will be half an inch now the outside diameter was 30 millimeters so what you do here um, so what you do when you're designing a seat for a bedding what you do is you design it at nominal values uh, why because it's easier and more efficient to designate the tolerances in the drawing if i give a value here even even if i say like you know 29.98 millimeters which is probably a, a, a you know a good target to hit uh, for a bedding um, that's still only one number right uh, for a machinist it doesn't make any difference if you tell them 30 millimeters 2998 because no single number can ever be achieved when you're machining something you need to have a tolerance uh, a, a really tight or a, li a really loose one but you need to have a tolerance to know that your part is acceptable so in that case it doesn't really care uh, what the number is here that's why when we're designing for beddings we design at nominal dimensions and we handle the tolerances in the 2d drawing now here i need about a tenth of an inch 
that's enough material to hold my bedding in i'm not expecting any real heavy duty operations if i was this might need to be up to a quarter of an inch or even uh, you know tested in finite element analysis whether it can take it or not and with that we have our inner seat ready let me check that i didn't mess up again no this seems to be correct so we select this and we cut our seat okay there you go so our bearing will go in this way and it'll stop here and what stops it from falling out the other way right when the when the carrier takes some loads that tend to pull the shaft out of um, out of the roller this way the way this arrow shows right what stops the bedding from falling out well uh, what will stop it is a circlet which uh, we will design right now and we will go to mcmaster car and search for circlets and that is a 13 millimeter bore so we want an internal retaining ring for an id of 30 and uh we can download yes there you go and we also have some really really important um information here so we we we're being told that we need to have a groove of 31.4 and a groove width of 1.3 so the diameter is 31.4 and the width of that groove is um, 1.3 the ring you see is slightly larger in diameter and slightly uh, thinner so you have some uh, tolerance built in there and it's also springy that's how it stays in place so let's go design that uh, but where will you design that uh, you know groove you might ask which is indeed a very good question well this is the back side of my seat and i know that i have a 14 millimeter width for my bedding so first i will make sure this is horizontal so this is at the 13 millimeter diameter then i will make sure that this is 31.4 millimeters divided by two that's the outer diameter and this is 1.3 millimeters that's a good width now i want this at a distance of 14 millimeters again it's a bedding so we are designing at nominal did i do this correctly you know drawing an extra line couldn't really hurt so yes this is correct so again this is a bedding we're drawing at nominal dimensions uh, again we have a tenth of a millimeter of clay because the ring is actually thinner so that's good enough even if we don't specify any tighter tolerances in the drawing and again we'll take a revolved cut and we should be fine and this is it guys uh, that's how you design the roller now it always helps if you give it a bit of a um, tiny little fillet on the top there right and uh, oh I didn't yeah okay and then I'll select this and give it a quarter of an inch but and then what I like to do is these inside corners I give it an, a fillet of 0.4 millimeters uh, this particular thing is not necessary here it will be very vital in the case of the shaft which is uh, what we will be discussing next time hit like if you liked it hit subscribe and i hope i see you in the next one